welcome to today's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast, your channel for super easy, no nonsense advice on how to declutter and organize your home. Please welcome your hosts, professional organizers, Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners to episode 23 of the Declutter Hub podcast. I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. If you have clutter and want to sort it out, this is the show for you. In today's episode, Leslie and I are talking about the most efficient way to declutter wardrobes. Following on from our last podcast, when we delved into the psychology of decluttering clothes, today we are going to talk about the most efficient way to declutter wardrobes. We're going to talk through each step to make it as easy as possible for you. So, Leslie, I love decluttering clothes and wardrobes. I, and I think our listeners know this by now. I think one of my favorite things in the whole wide world to do. Um, so I'm excited to talk to you about this. I know. So we did a lot of talking in the last podcast, a lot of talking about thinking and things like that. So today it's all about action, isn't it? And how you actually do it. Because some people get really overwhelmed at the thought of doing it and think, where do I even start? Mm-hmm. And so I think it's important that we give people an actual process, a tried and tested process, really, because this is something we've both been doing for years and years. Yeah. Um, and you need to make it manageable and break it down into smaller chunks. But I, I guess you know, we're not talking about a 10 minute here and a 10 minute there. We're talking about a few hours of time here to devote today. I'm going to declutter my wardrobe. You need to set a set, set a day aside really for this. Yeah. So this is a bigger project really, isn't it? That we're going to talk about. Yes. I think I agree with you. I mean, other parts of your clothing, you can break down in smaller pieces and say, okay, today I'm going to do my underwear or today I'm going to do my socks or today I'm going to do my pajamas. But if you want to, if you're going to open those wardrobe doors, <laughs> then I think you really have to be realistic and set aside a good, good couple of hours if you want to do this, this properly. Absolutely. Absolutely. All good projects start with a plan. So, yes. we, so we have to do some planning. Yes. So what's the first thing that we're going to do when we are planning to do our wardrobe declutter? What do we need to prepare? Well, we need to, yes, we need to prepare a couple of things. I think we need to have uh, make sure that we've got some bin bags ready, so some bags to put your clothes in that you no longer want. I think it's a good idea to have a bin bag ready for rubbish that you find, or little tags and plastics and things like that, and that have to be thrown away. I think it's helpful to have an empty laundry basket at the ready. So if you're going to come across clothes that you actually know that have to go into the laundry, you can put them in there. It's helpful, I think, to make your bed so you've got a flat surface to to work with. So make your bed, put the pillows and duvet back so you've got a flat surface to work with. Always have a hoover at the ready so you can do a bit of vacuuming and hoovering in the wardrobe when it's empty. Yeah, and like a damp cloth, you know, depending on what your wardrobe's made of, but that might be a damp cloth, it might be a wet cloth, it might be polish, you know, and just, you know, it depends on what your wardrobe is made of really, but it's about sort of preparing, you know, just jumping back uh, to the comments about making your bed as well. Your bed will get really, really dusty as well during this process because we're taking things out of the wardrobe that have been in there for a little while. So just know that probably at the end of the day, you need to factor in that you need to change your bedding. Yeah, yeah, good points. And also I think um, we need to think about if you're thinking about swapping some of your hangers over, then it's also is handy to have those new hangers ready. If you want to go from all kinds of different hangers in your wardrobe and you've decided, I want to have this nice streamlined look, have the hangers ready when you are going to declutter. And we'll talk about hangers a lot more in our next podcast about organizing your wardrobe and what kind of hangers there are and what kind of type. But the thing we want to say now is, have the hangers ready so you can have them ready for when you want to put stuff back in. I think it's interesting, isn't it really? Because it's one of the only times where we would advocate buying storage and, and the hanger would fall into the storage category yeah. before we actually declutter. Because normally we would say, leave that to the end. But actually what we don't want to do is do the same process next week and swap everything over to different hangers because it's quite a big deal and quite a big job really. Yeah. So it's important to to factor in how many hangers you're going to need if you do want to swap things over. And I always say to clients, you know, have a have a, 
if you do want to swap them, obviously we're going to talk about velvet hangers and the benefits of those and different types of hangers next time on the podcast. But have a, a mental kind of run through your wardrobe, see how many clothes you've got, because it can be hundreds and hundreds of hangers that you need if you're going to swap things over. Buy the hangers, leave them in the leave them in the wrap, keep the receipt, and if you don't need them because you've done an amazing job decluttering, then you can always take them back. <laughs> yes, that is definitely true. <laughs> okay, so we I am fully prepared now, Leslie. So what's the next step? Well, I think we need to break it down to one wardrobe at a time. It's it's interesting actually because we've spoken in another podcast about Marie Kondo um, and her methodology, which would suggest that you take all of your clothes out from everywhere all at the same time. So I think we said in our last podcast, we're not really big fans of doing that for lots and lots of different reasons, mainly because we feel that it might be. We understand the psychology of that, which is to kind of shock you into knowing that you've got too many clothes um but actually the practicalities of doing that um are not great so we would advocate doing things one wardrobe at a time so kind of one section of a wardrobe at a time really um depending on how your wardrobes are put together i think it's important you know you need to make progress and you need to you know you never know what's going to happen you and you don't want to bring every single thing out onto your bed and not be able to get into your bed at night. So break it down and that you can get through each wardrobe one step at a time. Yeah. Take everything out of your wardrobe. Don't do this kind of moving things across and you don't think, oh, they're all nicely hung up. I'm just going to kind of swish the hangers across and decide what we're actually going to get rid of. Because psychologically, once you've taken something out of your wardrobe, it's a more difficult decision to put it back in. But if it stays in your wardrobe, it's easier to leave it in there, if that makes sense. So it's a strange sort of psychology, but one that really, really does work. Once it's out, it's more difficult for it to go back in. So please take everything out of your wardrobe because we need to do that anyway for cleaning purposes. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I think we have a different methodology. You take everything out and put it on the bed, but I already do a sort of, when I take it out, I go, okay, is this a trouser? Is this a top? Is this a dress? Is this a skirt? Is this a jumper? And I kind of make a little bit of categorization. When I put it on the bed, I categorize it a little bit. So I put the jeans together and maybe possibly also the trousers on that same stack because they're all trousers. So if there's like nice black chinos or I put them together. So I divide it a little bit. So I don't put one wardrobe in its hole on the bed. I try to already do a little bit of categorization to make it easier to decide when you're decluttering what's going to go back in. Yeah, I guess it really it really very much depends, doesn't it, on what you're starting off with. You know, if you're starting off with a walk-in wardrobe with eight sections to it, then you're going to have some sort of categorization already in place within those wardrobes. But if it's a real mishmash of stuff, then to sort of do a pre-sort is probably a really good idea. Yeah, definitely. So, okay, so everything is out of the wardrobe. Then I think I, I think that's very important. Your wardrobe is empty now, so it's the perfect opportunity to give the wardrobe a clean. And I would say hoover it first. Use your your vacuum cleaner to hoover your wardrobe, and then give it a wipe with a damp or wet cloth, depending on what kind of material your wardrobe is made of. But things get dusty, you know, especially if there's bags on the floor of the wardrobe or shoes on the floor, things get really dusty and, and, and a bit grimy in there. So it's the perfect opportunity to, to kind of start fresh. Yeah. And don't forget the rails as well. A lot of people always forget to clean the top of the rails as well. And they've got yeah. a lot of dust on them as well. Yeah. So yeah, cleaning is a critical part and it makes you feel much better about things as well. It makes you feel as if you've done a thorough job. Yeah. And also sometimes even the hangers themselves. So if there are really kind of bulkier hangers that you said, okay, they're still good. I really want to keep those. Have have a, a cloth ready to, to wipe those hangers before you put your clothes on them again and putting them back. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Okay. So we've taken everything out, we've cleaned it, and now we're going to look at all the clothes. And I think it's important that we ask ourselves a couple of questions and not just kind of go, okay, let's just swap the hangers and put everything back. I think we need to ask ourselves, do we love it? Do we wear it? Do I want to keep it? And if you're like, I'm not sure, I think it's important that you then think to yourself, okay, why am I just struggling with this decision? Why is this a hard decision all of a sudden? Because you yeah. know what you wear all the time. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, we we talked and, you know, and it's a really important, if you've not listened to that podcast about psychology of clothes, I would absolutely recommend that you go back and do that now because we talk in detail about some of the emotions that you feel when you're trying to get rid of clothes. Not going to go into them in massive detail here, but some of the basic emotions that we feel, we feel guilty about money. You know, are we keeping it because we feel guilty about the money that we spent on it? Um, is it a sentimental item that uh, and we're keeping lots and lots of those? Does the item of clothing reflect the current lifestyle that you're leading at the moment or does it go back to a previous kind of life? Mm-hmm. Um, are you keeping it because you know that you look good in that kind of thing, but you've got 10 or 15 of the same types of things? Yeah. Or are you, are you keeping it because you think that you're going to get into it someday if your weight changes up or down? So those, I think, are really quite basic but quite difficult emotions to work through when you're looking at your your wardrobes and there's going to be some things that are very straightforward decisions that you're already wearing all the time that you already love but there are some that are a little bit more difficult and those tend to be the items of clothing that we've not worn for a little while but we still have got a yearning for some for whatever reason Mm -hmm. yeah definitely so make sure that whatever you decide you want to keep that is really something that is enhancing your life and that makes you happy and that you see yourself wearing now and in the future and not again end up with a wardrobe full of stuff that you know you're not going to wear. Yeah, absolutely. It should reflect the current you. It's a kind of, it's an expression of yourself, isn't it, to the outside world. And, you know, if you wear something that you feel that you look good in, you know, it starts the day, it's like the sun shining, isn't it? You start the day, you know, feeling good about yourself. So I know it's, it's an easy thing to say to have everything in your wardrobe that, um, that you absolutely love and life's not as simple as that. Um, but, you know, for the most part, things that are in there should really reflect the current you and make you feel happy about the, the way that you look in them. Yeah. So then the next step is take an item from your bed or a flat surface or whatever you're, you're using to have all your clothes together and hold it up, button it up, straighten it up, put the collar right, put the arms, prop, you know, the, the, the sleeves properly, button it up, put it on the right hanger. If you can really make sure that you take the metal hangers out of clothes because from the dry cleaning because they're really, really bad for your clothes because they're, they're too thin and they cut into your clothes. And ask yourself, okay, I lo- do I love this? Do I wear this? And then it's right on the hanger and then you feel, yes, this is the good thing. I want to keep this. Then and only then it goes back into your wardrobe. Yeah, because you need to make these items look appealing. So when they're, when they're on the hanger in your wardrobe, they need to look appealing. You know, it's, it's funny because people tend to do, we've spoken about this before, in wardrobes and in organization around the home, people tend to do what their parents did and they tend to follow suit with those habits. So there are people who um, hang all their clothes inside out because they think that the clothes are not going to get dust on them, which I found quite strange the first time I came across that and then um, was like yeah we need to turn all these around she's like oh I don't want to do that because I always hang my clothes inside out now to me they're never going to look their best if they're inside out never going to be really appealing for you to you know you've got to kind of go down a, a deeper route haven't you to make sure whether that's something that you want to wear today so yeah I think straightening things up on the hangers is really really important to make things look and once you've got that flow back into your wardrobe where you can move the hangers across and see what you've got it's much, much better. So make things look good on the hangers. Use the right hangers. You know, don't put shirts on trouser hangers if you run out. And, you know, make sure this is the opportunity where you've actually got the right hangers in place. Yeah, yeah. And also, if you are in doubt about an item, try it on, you know, and, and kind of even, does it still fit? I mean, I think that's quite an important point as well. To, you know, if you know it's going to be two tight sizes too small, but you can't really tell because you haven't worn it in a long time, sometimes it's a really good idea to try some clothes on while you're decluttering. Yeah, sometimes you can't remember. Some, some people can't remember why they're not wearing it and you need to go through that process of trying it on. I've yep. got clients and we, that sit there in the bra and knickers the whole time, three hours, <laughs> trying things on. It's always good fun. It's always good fun breaking down barriers, you know. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but no, it's a really good process because what, what we always like to advocate is don't make that decision later. I mean, obviously, if you're not sure and you want to get through it, And you've got 10 or 15 items that you're going to try on and you think I'm going to do that later. But effectively, that's procrastinating on a decision that you could make now. So if it's an easy and it's practical thing to do for you to try that item on there and then do it. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Okay. So 
we have decided it's staying. We have put it on the right hanger and we're now putting it back in the wardrobe. Our advice to you is don't worry too much yet about having everything in the perfect category and in the perfect place in your wardrobe. That comes later. Later, and we will talk about it in the next podcast about organizing wardrobes. Later, we decide which category certain clothes belong into. This is all about decluttering. This is making that shift between is it staying or is it going? And it's not important yet exactly where it's going to hang and how it's going to hang and which category and in which place. That's for later. We're now just going through everything and making those decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Because we need to break it down. You know, we talked about overwhelm and process. And if you kind of have to think about all those things all at the same time, but you just need to go through each individual process and then you can worry about categorization um, at the end, really. Yeah, yeah. So you've decided that that some things are staying. They've gone back into your wardrobe, hung very nicely and precisely with our new hangers and or with our buttons up and so on. And we're loving the way that they look. But there's lots and lots of items that we've decided that no longer serve us. And so we're actually going to offload those to somewhere else. So there's various places that they can go, obviously. Yeah. They can go to charity, which would be our number one choice of places for them to go. Really important, if we said many, many times before, that you choose a charity that's quite easy for you to drop off, that you know are going to take things. Don't think that if you've got a pair of socks with a hole in or a pair of knickers that the charity are not going to take them, yeah, because they can rag everything. I walked past my charity shop yesterday. The ragging man was there and there was 45 bags came out of my local charity shop just of rags. That's up to them to decide and they will get money for those rags as well. Yeah. So please don't put old clothes that you think the charity shop are not going to sell in, straight into landfill. Yeah. There's a there's a possibility that you might be able to sell things, but really, really be honest with yourself about those items. You know, some things that you think were really expensive and that you're going to get loads and loads of money for. Sometimes it's just not worth your while investing the time and energy and effort into trying to sell them to get 99 pence and stuff like that on eBay. You know, so really be honest. I think we've got a podcast lined up, haven't we, about um, from a, with an eBay seller. So hopefully she's going to give us some pointers about the kinds of things that are going to sell. Um, and the kinds of things that weren't Uh, but generally if it's not worth that much money it's probably not going to sell and it's another barrier to you getting the job done so putting things in piles waiting for selling it means that it's not going out of your house please prioritize the decluttering process first and the trying to make money second yeah yeah absolutely because the last thing we want is that you have a whole wardrobe full of stuff you're meaning to sell at some point at sometimes when you finally have time in the future it's more important to make those decisions now and of course if you've got a beautiful dress or coat or whatever from a brand with the tag maybe even still on that might be worth your while but charity shops need good good items too you know they they really deserve your uh, nice items as well yeah, um, definitely. Probably, you're probably also going to uh, run into some items that you think, oh, that should have gone to the dry cleaner, or I need to have that mended, uh, a button needs to be sewn back on, or the trouser has gotten loose on the bottom and it, the hem needs to be done. Have a separate bag ready for things like that. If you know that you want to keep the item, then put it in a dry cleaning and mending bag. If you know it needs some work done and you're never going to do it or you're going to do it and then still not wear the item, then that item needs to be decluttered. Yeah, and then there might also be some stuff, depending on whether you borrow clothes, there's a lot of people, particularly younger generation, that borrow clothes all the time. So if there's stuff that needs to get passed back to someone, um, people, you know, you need a bag, you know, just maybe a bag for life or something that can go back to, to things that you have borrowed talking about passing things on to other people be very mindful if you are thinking oh I'll give that to my sister or I'll give that to my daughter or I'll give that to my mum make sure that they actually want your stuff and that you're not just offloading your guilt onto someone else so it's really important to make sure that if you're going to send 75 items of clothing that you no longer want to your sister that she actually would quite like them and that can be a tough a tough conversation sometimes but it's an important one it's all about breaking down those barriers and being realistic with yourself yeah yeah because otherwise it just becomes more things and you're basically moving your problem to your sister or your mom or your or your friend and yeah, you're exactly. not dealing with it yourself you're just moving your stuff to their house and for them to sort it out i see this all the time <laughs> yeah. yeah right 
don't overfill your bags. Don't make them so heavy they're actually ripping off the weight. So make sure you use good sturdy bags and not bags that already have maybe a tear or a rip in, in them because then they're going to burst open. So don't overfill them. You still need to be able to carry, it, carry them downstairs and put them in your car or anything like that. So don't overfill them. And also have a plan for those bags. You don't want to have them in your hallway for the next four weeks or in your driving around them in your car all the time. So have a plan to go to the charity shop that same day or the next day or over the weekend and get that out of your house or to the dry cleaners or to your mom or your friend. It needs to keep moving and not become another bag of stuff somewhere that needs to be dealt with at a later time. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's really important. Yeah. So are we done with our decluttering then? So we've done it, have we? We've put everything back in the wardrobe that we're keeping and we've taken to the charity shop or whoever, wherever, everything that's going out. Mm -hmm. So what the decluttering process at this point is effectively done. We're well aware that there is obviously a big overlap with the organizing of your wardrobe, but we want to be very specific. We're talking about decluttering today and organizing comes in another podcast. We're going to talk about categorization. We're going to talk about storage um, options and things like that so you need to tune into our next podcast in a week or two about organizing your wardrobe so we are done yes that was, pain, that was pain free wasn't it <laughs> well we are done with the wardrobe leslie we still have to do the drawers and the other wardrobes and <laughs> and the shelves well, it all seems so it all seems so simple to talk about it in 25 minutes i know it? i know I, in real life it will take longer listeners so don't get discouraged here don't think oh i can do 20 minutes and i'm all done take the time like we said before it is is a marathon not a sprint and um even you know, if your wardrobe feels too big for you, only do half the wardrobe. Break it down into pieces that you feel that are um, going to work for you. And we are excited. You know, um, We hope you're going to have a look at your wardrobes and declutter some of those items that have been lurking in there. And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to listen today. So if you'd like to get more tips and advice, please follow us on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and we have a lively, supportive Facebook group community where we chat all things clutter and we'd love to see your before and after photos of your wardrobes there. Please share them. If you don't want to miss the next weekly episode, subscribe to the Declutter Hub podcast on iTunes, Spotify and Stitcher and it will pop into your notifications each Friday. See you next time. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Check out declutterhub.com for more inspiration and don't forget to tune in next week.